The Morgan Report with David Morgan. This is David Morgan with you with the weekly perspective for the week ending December 1st, 2017. Well, before I get started, we're going to do podcasts only for the next few weeks. I am going to be out of the country for several weeks, but we'll post this on our YouTube channel as well as our podcast. So, getting started, wolfstreet.com. Wolf Richter, use him almost every week. Headline reads, stock market lazes happily on a powerful time bomb and the Fed begins to worry. Margin debt hit another record level, $561 billion at the end of October, up 16% for the year. And of course, this is leverage and it's a big accelerator on the way up, but it's also an accelerator on the way down. What's interesting is the comment from the Fed. Even the Fed is, is now worried about margin debt and a slew of other factors not related to consumer price inflation, but to assets, assets, and of course the debt. So the U.S. stock market capitalization is about 135% of GDP, and this is the highest level since about 1999-2000. And remember, the Nasdaq hit that 5,000 mark way back then, and it took years to get back to that level. Trading volumes in bonds and stocks have markedly declined, and that is a indicator, uh, a divergent indicator, which means there's a hint that there is a likelihood that there will be a correction at some point. I know I've been saying that for a while, but it is true. Next up is from Zero Hedge. Russia plans first ever sale of yuan bonds. This is Chinese bonds <clears throat> coming from China. They're five-year notes. What's notable about this is that this is a first and that China is over leveraged like everybody else. And of course, selling more debt doesn't make your debt situation a good thing. It makes the problem worse. You cannot print yourself out of this thing, although that's what probably all sovereign nations are going to attempt. Continuing on, Wolf Richter, U.S. gross national debt jumps $723 billion in 12 weeks. Janet Yellen, quote, very worried about sustainability of U.S. debt trajectory, end quote. I think that's all I really have to say. Basically, you know, I harp on the same thing over and over, but it is the number one problem. And now that even Yellen was telling Congress about the economy, it's challenging and the disappointingly slow recovery since the recession. And once she was asked about this trigger, she said it was up to Congress to decide how to confront the fiscal outlook, but added that she was worried about the sustainability of the U.S. debt trajectory. The idea of triggers is motivated by the concern that some have over the picture, we have, uh, have a debt sustainability now and into the future. And I would simply say I'm very worried about the sustainability of the U.S. debt tra trajectory. The future of the deficit and debt trajectory should be a very significant concern, she said. And finally, beating this theme to death from dollarcollapse.com, John Rubino. Thank you, John, for all the help you've given us over the years. You're a great writer and a great person and some great insights. He writes, we give up. Government spending and deficits soar pretty much everywhere. And he goes through and shows the Japanese debt, which now is about 250% of GDP. He goes on to write that if you go back several years, there wouldn't be an economist on the planet that thought you could sustain a society at that level of debt. Nonetheless, here we are. And other things that, you know, brought to the fore, meaning negative interest rates. I mean, in Europe, you're getting, you know, you put in your $1,000 and you're guaranteed to get 990 back. I mean, that was unheard of, unprecedented, and yet people accept it. So certainly we're getting to a point where I think things are going to, have that point of no return that so many of us have talked about for so long, but I think it is inevitable and how it plays out, no one can be absolutely certain. But certainly having a diversified portfolio and a hedge position will benefit you, I'm certain, over the next five years. I doubt this could go much more than three, but time will tell. And I'm going to end this week fairly short. I'll try, it'll be under 10 minutes. I'll end with gold. I don't have much to comment on silver, although I'll make a brief statement in a minute. This comes from RT, Russia Today. Headline reads, Russia and China could set international gold price based on physical gold trading. Something all of us that have been in the space either new or a long time like 
me and many that follow my work and others like me, since Russia and China, India, Brazil, and South Africa, in other words, the BRICS, are all either large producers or consumers of gold or both. It is highly likely that the BRICS block that constitutes this could focus its cross-border gold trading network on trading physical gold. Gold pricing benchmarks from such a system will be based on physical gold transactions, which is a departure from the way the international gold price is currently established. Such a system would be a threat to gold trading markets in London and New York. The London over-the-counter market and the New York COMEX futures exchange currently set the international gold price. OTC and COMEX are really trading synthetic derivatives on gold and are completely detached from the physical gold market. Let me read that again. Completely detached from the physical gold market. In London, the derivatives fractionally backed unallocated gold positions, which are predominantly cash settled. In New York, the derivative is an exchange-traded gold futures contract, which are predominantly cash settled and backed by very little real gold. The major gold producers, Russia, China, and other BRICS nations, could change the way the international gold prices are set currently in a synthetic trading environment, which has very little to do with the physical gold market. BRICS cooperation in the gold market was first unveiled in April by the first deputy chairman of Russia's central bank. He stated, We, the central bank of the Russian Federation, discuss gold trading. The BRICS countries are major economies with large reserves of gold and impressive volume of production and consumption of precious metals. In China, gold is traded in Shanghai and in Russia in, Mo in, Mos in Moscow. Idea is to create a link between these cities so as to intensify gold trading between our markets. So I may have misspoken a moment ago, but it said in the article, the major gold producers, Russia, China, in other words, the BRICS, could change the way international gold prices are set currently by in a synthetic trading environment, which has little to do with the gold market. So I think I made that clear. So my forecast for the end of the year is, unfortunately, I think we're going to taper off to the end of the year, both gold and silver. Silver has been particularly weak, going from 1750 to 1650 rather rapidly here in the last several trading sessions. And there's very little interest in the market on the precious metals. Almost everything is looking either at the stock market or particularly the cryptocurrencies, which are on fire across the board. And it will remain that way until it, does, it stops. As far as those that are savvy and understand markets, it's a very good idea to buy through weakness in the month of December for precious metals and especially the underlying equities. There's almost always a nice pop in January, February. And in 2016, we actually saw it continue all the way through the late summer. I think 2018 will be better than 2017 and perhaps somewhat close to what happened in 2016. There's a lot of anticipation for the 2018 financial markets due to the economist cover from so many years ago that showed the phoenix rising on top of burning currencies at its feet with a gold medallion of some type around its neck and get ready for a currency change printed on the cover and the year was 2018. So best of the holidays for everyone everywhere. And I will continue to do these podcasts again. It'll just be uh, audio for the next several weeks. And that's it for the weekly perspective.